Oof for ZSS on the ground because it forces you into situations where Fair and Nair er, air connect. It allows you to force jumps to short off pressure with Zare and it mix up into grab. It mix up is up in a dash attack and ZSS having one of the lowest tractions and as a result, best pivot cancels in the game makes this that move huge for setting up tech chase's doorstep already started off with the ladder looking for the read and reset but just not going to find it so instead just going to try and find the pressure reduce these resources and try and find an early stock here against the pac-man from kansas city and this is the scary thing you mentioned that fast movement it's very worrisome if you're wanting to play this zoner that needs to set up the tools against a character so mobile and able to get around stuff like hydrant but isaiah you know firing off a little bit and and of course has the scrapping utility of Pac-Man's aerial kit. And Isaiah, right, you know, not just here from Kansas City, one of the, I believe the number seven player on their PR does have a Kazia in the back pocket as well. And one of two Pac-Man in this region, so having Rocky, right, just mm -hmm. there with you to be able to lab and push this character's meta forward. Or, so you know Isaiah's got the sauce off and has looked time and time again through this bracket for tech chases and Galaga combos. So that's what I'd expect to see here as well as just incredible platform pressure with Bell and a priority for that over the kill confirms, but still able to look for them there picking it up off that second use. And now Galaga in hand. This is where it gets extra scary for the combo game. Don't even need it though. Just go for the quick little up throw up air, but getting caught by that boost kick, of course. Got to be very careful how you play around ZSS's shield. Otherwise, she can pop that option and get a nice stock. And I love that from Door Doorstop. Using the Zare, recognizing that that move, ooh, being transcendent, right, will find its way mm -hmm. through ooh, the projectile from Pac-Man. And, and because of the disjoint, you get the space Ace, to contest that on platform, finding some pressure and a little bit of extra damage. But ZSS just doesn't have a lot of damage output. So you dealt six, but took 25 for one interaction. And now though, you have the stage control, you have the corner pressure, but just not able to get away with that roll. So now Rocky, or sorry, Isaiah gets some time to set up and you just have to reset away. I think what we're seeing right now is the kind of differential when it comes to the ability to output damage ZSS a little bit more specific in those spots to do huge damage combos. Meanwhile, you know, Isaiah, if he's got that Galaga, pop it, and we're going to roll with it. And now, Bell don't even need it. Back air kick to get the stock. And that was incredibly smart there from Isaiah because you you throw or owe the Bell in that position, right? It covers the drift to platform. It covers flip kick. You have to drift away there so you can just cover air dodge with back air and you just really lock down, right, in that option select situation. And now the Galaga in hand, right? There's two uses. So once that re-grab comes out, unless you charge it, nobody can pick that projectile up again. So something to keep track of here for Pac-Man. But Doorstop now just trying to not give you the space to ever pull it out because once you do now that bell in hand right doorstop just desperately trying to not lose this game in this corner situation yeah and this is really scary percent against pac-man but still of course doorstop no stranger to big comebacks 84 percent now some good options coming into play like zara into boost kick but instead we're going to see that forward air just to push isaiah off to the corner still isaiah keeps scrapping out with that forward air and isaiah here, right up a full stock, doing a beautiful job holding a, um, under platform. ZSS can't fall in air on you, kind of has to poke with these Zares and forward airs. There's doorstop, not a ZSS who's going to look to mix up those wave bounce plasma whips that we see like Mars and Nido Sharp look for as a kill mix up. So he's going to kill a lot more in the corner. He's not going to be able to find these raw read situations. And that combined with a large stage has been something Isaiah has taken full advantage of. Yeah, and look at that, just the quick back air though from Doorstop to go ahead and hopefully bring this to a point where Doorstop can get through. But you know what, Isaiah looking very pretty, got the Hydrant set up in the center, threatening with the kill too, and now Bell in hand. Look at that, Doorstop just playing it so evasive. And, yeah, and that's one of very few Hydrants we've really seen. Isaiah hasn't been able to get these set up far in advance, and so Doorstop has kind of been able to ignore them from the most part, but you saw the counterplay is there. I love that Zare off the frame trap, right? You either get caught in the up air string, or you get caught by that even still, though, just not a lot of damage. So ZSS gets something, but just not too much. She has to work so hard, and we see Doorstop winning interaction after interaction, but all it takes is for him to lose one more hit, and the game is over. Yeah, and now key on charge two. That's a scary option to just burst you down with a quick kill. Looking for the Ferris to try to lock Doorstop down a ledge, and there's the key. Don't need it. Back air. I think one of the crazy things that we saw with especially uh, that kill two, kill three for Isaiah, 
is it wasn't about the bell or the key. It was, hey, I'm going to make you scared so you burn some options and then I'm trapping you. And I love and that key was incredible. Last stock game one here because watch this, Ian. And the forwarder comes out, you know the jump is gonna come out, out, mm -hmm. out here, and the Zare. So oh, we see Isaiah wait it out, drift back, and you expect the key on the landing lag. So Doorstop knows that shields, but but every time afterwards had been retreating with a jump to that platform. So Isaiah just jumps up and catches the landing lag. Because even if you don't do anything, right, when you land, you have four frames, you can't do anything. So even with frame one jab, ZSS just doesn't have an option to beat that back air out. And as Isaiah just gets the free E punish. I think you mentioned it really well at the beginning. ZSS has to pick her spots well. And so far, Isaiah, as you said, just like with that platform, has been doing a really good job of understanding you can't pick a right spot here. And also, speaking of spots, I don't like the spot that Doorstop picked to go back to. I think PS2 here, yes, you like the high platforms and the movement as DSS to get around, but Pac-Man just can run away, control the pace of the game so well. And honestly, I think Isaiah's platform positioning has been immaculate, whereas Doorstop is just kind of taking the hits he can get, hasn't been able to line up these situations under platform or use it defensively because you just have to constantly contest Pac-Man. And... And so I think the large stage size is actually really working against him here. Ooh, and it almost worked into a kill, but you know what? Doorstop barely getting out of that bell lag just soon enough. Might be able to find this stock at ledge. But uh, once again, whiffing on that down smash. We've seen a lot of those at ledge, maybe just to condition away from it, and maybe Doorstop getting ready to get some kills later. And speaking of kills, finally the plasma wave coming out. We didn't see it all of game one. Doorstop whiffing the back air, which is not something we normally see from him on those edge guards, but still able to clean it up. And now that up smash coming out as well, right? This is a lot more of that classic North American ZSS playstyle we've seen. The F tilt, the plasma whips, these landing zares, and the random up smashes, right? I, this is the old Mars playstyle, and it's a complete reversal from what, how Doorstop approached the first game. It's working a lot better, and we already see him racking up the damage here against Isaiah. Yeah, it's also really scary for Isaiah because they keep getting locked down on those platforms like right here. Those up airs just threatening the kill nice and early. But now Doorstop gets the forward air one, as you mentioned, and not quite able to convert off of it. But it don't matter. Still locking down even more and more damage is Isaiah kind of getting blown up here in this game number two. Okay, the plasma whip utilizing the water there into that charge. But unfortunately, the stun gun down smash not going to do it, and boost kick just not able to find its mark either. Ooh. So now Doorstop getting punished for what was an incredibly heads up play. The hydrant plus the apple. I mean, I mean, what do you what do you do? Right? Where do you go? So Doorstop going to lose the first stock, but has the pressure here to now lock down a stock lead yet again. And Isaiah playing from behind, having to approach, has made all the difference here in game number two. Yeah. That being said, though, Isaiah starting to do a really good job of avoiding some of these kills and kill options. Doorstop whipping that back air after the Zare don't matter. Plasma with once again first stock and now two stock. And we talked about it being a great tool in the matchup game one, and now Doorstop just hadn't thrown out one at all. But game two, he has found both his stocks off of it. Unfortunately, that bell connecting a little too low, but gonna bounce you far enough away because of the mist tech that Doorstop just isn't able to get back with Boost Kick. So Isaiah able to find a cheeky little stock there. Now though at the ledge and Obviously, ZSS here only needs a neutral or forward air one at this point to come into that flip kick and take this game. That's the thing, you've got to play very careful when you're stuck at this ledge here, because doorstop, one good read and you are gone. Gets the grab, there's just, a nair. Yep, but just out of percent at that point, the slight raid plus out at 50, that combo stops working at just about 45, but now you have to expend your resources to come back. I like the double paralyzer trying to condition the roll and then catch it, but just didn't work out for doorstop. Gonna get the tech chase, looking for it again. Great miss tech and, tech and then just get up from Isaiah to avoid that paralyzer because it would have covered just about anything else. Now, doorstop a little on the back foot as Galaga make that bell in hand. This is the horrifying part of Pac-Man. He can just stun you at any second. Yep. And there's the stun. There's the kill. Wow. He stole that victory from the jaws of defeat. Doorstop had to lead the entire game through. But all it took was that one bell. And... That was a Galaga combo that right, Doorstop expected, but that charge reset right, is absolutely huge from Isaiah because this that re-grab that we just saw on the bell, right, that was one, two, three uses off the item. With yep. Pac-Man, once you re-grab an item, you can't re- Once you throw out Galaga, 
anybody can pick it up once. But once that happens, nobody can pick it up as an item again unless Pac-Man charges it. So if you grab that item after the first use from Pac-Man and throw it back at him, he can't actually Z-catch it. That being said, you can't be missing those techs, otherwise you're getting caught in a jab lock. And now, Doorstop though, firing off with those fares into the up smashes. Now looking for damage, but just spacing a little off for that Hydrant. Yeah, that fair one, my friend, right? Finding that whole combo starter absolutely huge. Trapping you where no matter if you hit the tech or miss the tech, it doesn't matter, right? Because it just about covers everything. And now fair one back here, right? Exactly what we're talking about. Pioneering the kill confirm and able to pick up a really early stock for it. So now Doorstop getting to start off with a lead again, but down 2-0. Having to complete a reverse 3-0 in the first round of Top 48, you do not want to have to make the losers run because that is a long and grueling day. My ultimate top eight does not start till 7 p.m. Dude, all day event for doorstop if they end up in that loser's run with almost no breaks. And uh, you know what? You know they want to make it. They are the number one seed at this point. But Isaiah showing up and showing that as 31st seed, they finna make the upset and maybe take that top eight. But doorstop still got something to say about it. Look at that fair to go ahead and get that tech chase with the water boost. We've seen it a couple of times, and Doorstop keeping it clean. Yeah, showing you just how familiar he is with this matchup, right? I, this man is a labber's labber. You, you know how much he cares about this game. And the craziest thing, too, he was staying in a hotel. His roommate was snoring. And so he actually said, you know what? I don't want to deal with snoring before bracket. This man woke up, this, la went home last night to Ohio, drove back two hours this morning in time for the 11 a.m. start time. I'm, I'm, so you get on that, that may also be affecting his play, right? He is probably just a little bit tired. Just a tad bit, but the bell bouncing off the shield and doorstop keeping a good awareness of that kill option. But still, Isaiah trying to reset, and I love the fact that he'll just back off, go for the charge, and then come right in with an aerial to go ahead and snuff out Doorstop's aggression. And now catching the air dodge with Nair and kill with the stomp. Yes, yeah, snuffing out the recovery there right as well. All light of Doorstop's lead has been quenched. This is a last stock situation, Yin. Down 2-0, and if Doorstop's feeling sleepy, I mean, he better wake up fast because it's been happening slowly over every game, but you don't have room to be groggy anymore, my friend. And look at that fair into the jab, getting some nice quick damage. But that's the thing, ZSS not able to rack it up as fast as you would like, but it don't matter if you can keep finding these resets and the reads. Nair, oh. flip kick, you are gone. You can't be messing with doorstop. No, sir, and oh, baby, that was spicy. But you expect the paralyzer into the boost kick there, but saying, hey, I'm a little bit far in, right? PS2 is pretty wide, so that's a lot of space I have to cover here. Here, so watch this final stock. Gets the nair, the nair frame trap into the jab, resets, and then the empty hop back to read this. It's, it's, you say, okay, I don't think boost kick's gonna kill, so I'm gonna trap you on the DI in because you're going to be DIing in by right? expecting that boost kick yep. to come out. Out, great heads up play from doorstop to find the game, keep himself in this bracket in, but he still has two more to go if he wants to keep this winner side run going. Ooh, and getting caught up, but reversing that immediately, noticing Isaiah's missteps. And that's been the big thing that changed in game three. And now we're seeing it already yeah. in game four. Look at the patience there, knowing no boost kick available. Instead, go for the guaranteed damage off that air dog. It was a DI read there instead of true. So I like, as you said, that doorstop reset that. But we talked about him being maybe a little groggy. He is fully woken up. Now you see how fast the pace of his play is compared to these first three games of the set, right? He is here to play the decision making just so much faster. And all of a sudden, right, the time that Rocky had to set it before just doesn't exist. ZSS is smothering you no matter whether you're in center stage, under the platform, Doorstop's positioning his lockdown too, and now we're going out for the edge guards. He is confident, and this is a different Doorstop than games one, two, and three, and I think Isaiah woke up the beast. Oh, just a little bit. Uh, we saw that back here. Just the perfect placement as they jumped over that grab, but now look at this Doorstop. He is racking up even more damage with the callouts of those up smashes. You mentioned that US version of gameplay with ZSS of the callouts on it. I like the up tilt mix up, just comes out so fast, you can catch out a jump. Um, but it's not a traditional ZS option, but it's something that you see players start to implement just to eke out a little bit more, more value out of her, her kit. Doorstop poking with that safe down angle death tilt we talked about before. Now the Zare though, just again poking, crouching, utilizing the space to your advantage, and this is a complete reversal from before, right? Because you got the early lead, because you don't let Isaiah set up in the first place, is what was a huge 
stage advantage for Isaiah has now become one for Doorstop in turn. Yep, look at that bell in hand. But Doorstop, we saw it during game one, wasn't quite able to avoid the bell and then the option after, but now just keeping it on deck and ready to flow. Isaiah, though, looking for a way through and the up tilt from Doorstop Hit him with the spin kick and keep him in disadvantage at all times. I like getting up that high above the Hydrant, even though it doesn't yep. work out, even though Isaiah takes the stop, because you kind of just don't let Isaiah contest you because of the platform positions. You get to land behind the Hydrant safely and defend the pressure. Now the boost kick is going to close it out after that ground, and Isaiah one stock away from a game five. All of the pressure is on him, and, and one, my friend, he almost ran that Steam engine out of coal, but now it's on its last legs, eggs, it's barreling towards a cliff, and he's realizing that these brakes might not be working all too well. Yeah, ooh, look at the nair into the forward air. As you said, Doorstop has been starting to bring it back, and wow, even finding a down tilt into the back air, a little bit of a DI read on that, because if you DI out, you ain't gonna hit, but it don't matter as Doorstop bringing out plenty of damage and has lapped him in percent. And I love that I love that down tilt, as you mentioned as well, because Doorstop knows, hey, he's gonna DI out here, out, out here, right? He saw the nair flip kick last game, so I'm not gonna get it, so I'm just gonna take the damage and instead, set up the conditioning for later, find these paralyzers, right? We didn't see a single one connect in games one or two. Game three, right, we saw one. Doorstop up, was didn't get the sock off of it, but was able to still take the game. And then game number four, or now, they've really heated it up. Apologies, game three, he, did, he took the stock off of it, but you know, oh, it didn't. It just has played an increasing value as this set has gone on. Right, Doorstop playing the long game, setting up the conditioning with this character, and ZSS is a character that to get maximum value requires the reads, but once they have them in, and once they have that download, this character can kill you sooner off of them than almost anyone else on the cast. Oh yeah, and Doorstop is starting to feel that heat. As you said, was maybe a little bit sleepy, but now they are coming alive in this game number five. And I'm so excited for the possible reverse 3-0. Still, Isaiah doing a really good job of utilizing these quick aerial moves to go ahead and shut it down, but it don't matter if you're gonna get boost kick sent out of the park. And the precision in spacing for that, for Doorstop to recognize, hey, you're kind of under the platform jumping. I'm right past the inner edge of PS2 flat, so I can find that ladder, and it's true. Got the DI I2 to make that connection in the middle happen, and then found the quick stock. Unfortunately, though, Yin, that pa paralyzer off the bell meant that the stock count now even. Doorstop not able to manage the lead, and although Isaiah kind of got outclassing game three and four, entering back to that first half of the set form and making this one close. Yeah, and now Doorstop playing very patient, just trying to zone out with these Zares. And look at that, even able to get the Apple and now using it to lock down that shield. And Isaiah, good acknowledgement that if they hit the tech, they're going to get that uh, that Paralyzer off. Uh, the early air dodge by CSS, the only character in this game that can't fastball air dodge. If she does, air dodges, it cancels her fastball just like if you input an aerial. So weird little quirk with the character Doorstop using it there to fastball, cancel it, and then find his way back to stage with a little bit more flexibility and able to do so. Oh, just to reset, trap you on the platform, trying to find the paralyzer off of it, but the slight miss spacing is going to give Isaiah the chance on the reversal here again, and now Doorstop has to get tricky just to find his way out of the corner against Pac-Man. And this is looking very scary. Bell in hand, 123. You don't want to be going down a stock, and you are going to do so all the same. Isaiah now on the verge of upsetting doorstop here. And yet in the second that stock got cheap that got taken, the crowd starting to heat up in the background. You know they are pulling for this upset to happen at, here at Full Bloom. Doorstop looking for the edge guard. He knows that his time is running out. If he doesn't find it, the Galaga, though, gonna get caught by the platform, disrupt the combo. Huge break for him, but he needs to find this one fast, or that mileage is starting to run a little low in the gas tank. Yeah, and look at that, the Nair, just a nice little quick get-off-me tool against Doorstop, charging the fruit, just trying to set up for the next interaction, but Doorstop getting ready, putting the gas on, and really trying to force this stop out as they kind of need to at this point if they don't want to be thrown away this game. But now that we see Isaiah with the lead, right? First time since game number two. Ooh, we saw that Hydrant under platform just so hard to dislodge because then Pac-Man gets to control the pace of play. Then Doorstop has to find a way in and uh, through this lean to right, this three-walled fort that Pac-Man gets to set up and it's just so incredibly difficult without Zare that it's only doing 6% into maybe a tech chase option. And Yin, he needs to find this one fast, but it might be something undoable unless he finds it now. 
Absolutely. And finally getting that grab. Should be able to set up for an edge guard, maybe. Not gonna wait for the ledge trap instead and being off on the plasma whip. We've seen that three or four times in the past ledge scenarios, just unable to find the hit. Yeah, it covers so much, and you realizing the bell is gonna delay the hydrant so we can get the paralyzer off, extend the its time and hit lag further, and then lock down the space for some, so much longer than Isaiah thought that he jumps into the own his own hydrant, get which gets blown up by that paralyzer and dies. What a heads-up play from Doorstop now to force the last dock situation. He is pulling out all of the stops now slamming every door shut for Isaiah's path mm -hmm. to victory as he p tries to find a way back and complete the reverse 3-0 here. And now, using the Hydrant to their own advantage, you mentioned it in that kill as well. Doorstop has had really good utilization of Isaiah's tools against him, but now Isaiah, oh my gosh, whiffing on the belt doesn't matter though, as Big M, Isaiah gonna be able to secure it out with the quick stomp, and now Doorstop. Anybody in losers? They and better be worried. Yin, the sigh of relief, the head bob, the pop off from the crowd behind him. You know this man is hyped, right? That is the biggest upset of the tournament so far. Dorsop gambled on better sleep in his own bed and that a two hour drive wouldn't impact him. Well, Yin, it might have in the first couple days and then he woke up, but Isaiah made the adjustments and locked down what was really a game five classic here for the Midwest. I am incredibly excited to see the sets these two play in the future. And the losers run, that doorstop I'm sure is bound to make. Can yep. he do it? Can he pull his way through five hours of straight top 48 gameplay to make that top eight? Dude, the catch on the double jump two, making it so that they couldn't quite get a better recovery route and was forced to pop that, dude, the, the orange two. Early. And yeah. I want I want to look at that as well here. Or if we jump back just a little bit further, or er, from the beginning of this interaction, so loss of double jump. Mm -hmm. That's the first important thing. And that was because of Doorstop having a predictable double jump timing the whole way through. ZSS's love to to just mash that instant double jump there. But because of that, you have to flip kick early, root out low, into the boost kick. And you can't even boost kick immediately because look at the height, right? A boost yep. kick here would. It a gets boost you kick here would come up past ledge, and then you have to special fall down. You're definitely going to die. So Doorstop has to wait till he gets down here to even with a drift for maybe find his way out that way. Hey, and it's an easy drop zone, right? You don't even have to crouch ledge slip. You yep. can just run off and dare, and it covers everything you have left. That double jump read was insane. Plus the orange, too. Like, if you don't pop that flip kick early, all of a sudden, that orange is coming through, and it's catching you anyway. So Doorstop... Had to be recognizing that issue, and Isaiah just forces it all. Yeah, and, and just locking it down, right? It I was once Doorstop lost the lead, once he had to contest again that Hydrant under platform, right? Because you've got Hydrant between you and them, even though you have stage control, the platform above their head, so you can't aerial in. You can't flip kick around. They're so close that even if you go around them, you're then putting yourself in the corner against a Pac-Man that just gets to charge the choice of Galaga, Bell, mm -hmm. Apple, Orange, Melon, whatever they want. And all of those fruit are so incredibly lethal, right? Especially in the, at the ledge. So just, it's so hard once you get the lead because you have so much space to cover or against that Pac-Man. And he had to maintain it. He lost it. And it was just the story of the first two games Which after that. 